the evening. Two more women to do battle for you this evening. Would you first welcome, walking out right now from Matamora, Mexico, Elvia Trevino. And there you see Elvia Trevino with the record of two and three on a bit of a skid, losing her last three. Most recent appearance, April 28th against Lorraine Villalobos, losing a four-round decision. She made her pro debut back in 2012. Is this her first fight in the United States? I believe it is. She does hail from Mexico. And her opponent from down under, would you welcome Louisa Houghton? Now there is Louisa Houghton. Now she fought February 24th at the Forum on the Superfly undercard, and she was upset by Anahi Torres losing an eight round decision in what was a bit of a shocking result. Yeah, it was, uh, it was her first loss. It's great that she's coming right back just a few months later. Um, the thing about that loss is it was an excellent fight, and she was in with a grizzled veteran from Mexico. Her opposition tonight is not quite to that level. Yeah, and you see in the background there is Grant Elvis Phillips, best known for his high-quality gloves. He helped handle that career. Certainly one of the major boxing figures in the sport today so there he, you have he's it. a long time manager though absolutely so we are all set up here six rounds females in the flyweight division let's get all the particulars from mike hart ladies and gentlemen our fourth encounter of the evening set for six rounds in the women's flyweight class your referee once again is jack reese introducing first punching in the blue corner wearing the blue trunks trimmed in white Weighing in at 103.8 pounds from Matamore, Mexico, fighting out of Barba Brava in Brunsville, Texas. She brings a professional mark that includes two wins with three losses. How about it for Elvia La Lovita Trevino? <laughs> and her opponent on my right. Wearing the black trucks with white and purple, weighing in at 105.4 pounds. From Perth, Australia, fighting at a Jerry Ortiz Memorial Gym. Her professional record includes seven wins with one loss. How about it for Bang Bang Lulu Hata? All right, there you have it. We are going six rounds, two minutes each. Yeah, you see that Lulu is the uh, older fighter at age 33. Um, she's always going to be the shorter fighter. She's just five foot tall, probably 4'11". But otherwise, their reach, their wingspan is about equal. Yeah, and unlike our last female matchup, the, these two young ladies actually look like they belong in the same weight class. Yeah, Trevino's 5'3", so she's not much taller. But just looking at their physiques, you see the athleticism of Houghton. To me, she's one of those natural fighters that just relishes this physical competition. And just looking at her walk-in, judging from her last fight and the way she was during the fighter introduction, she's just got a lot of energy, and it's great to see that. I think ring rust might have been a factor, Doug, looking at Houghton's record. Three fights in 2014, three in 2015, just one in 16, and no fights in 2017. Uh, definitely that inactivity hurt her going into that fight because her opponent was ready. Yep. Her opponent started f hard and fast. And you could tell just that, you know, I was at the weigh-in. Her opponent was, uh, was in excellent shape.
I like Houghton's hand speed. I like her, the fluidity of her punches and the technique. She's very fast. Fast and accurate. And she has fun in there. I mean, she is just relaxed. She's like, I, I'm, I'm at home when I'm in the ring is, is how I gather her, her mentality. Yeah, she actually boxes with a full smile on her face. But she's effective. She's she's dialed in. But her, her, her technique is really good. Now, she can't get overconfident, though. But she was definitely in command at this opening round. Round one in the books between Houghton and Trevino. Once again, you're at the historic Avalon in Hollywood, California. We want to thank everyone that's watching the live stream. Being provided by... 360 promotions of Tom Loeffler. If you have a question or a comment for Doug Fisher and I, drop us a line on Twitter at Dougie Fisher and at Steve UCN Live. Again, our main event, Dennis Shafikov, two-time title challenger, takes on Hector Ambris Suarez. Also to come, Brian Sabalo and Sergey Boachuk and Jonathan Esquivel. And just like round number one, Doug, it seems to be the quickness and the jab of Houghton kind of setting the tempo here in the second. Yeah, that's what I like about Lulu. She sets the pace, and she does, though, does so with a lot of energy and enthusiasm. I really enjoy watching her box. And I like her upper body movement as well. She mixes in between those jabs and the combinations. She hooks off the jab pretty well. She could tap the body well with, with both hands that we just saw. There's a lead, uh, lead hook followed by a right cross. And she's got good reflexes, yeah. too. She's able to lean away from punches. A lot of folks aren't able to do that. A sweeping right hand. Houghton is, a, is an athlete. And as I understand it, she was like a pro skateboarder before she got into mm. boxing. And you've got to have good, good balance, good balance and control, and agility to be a, a skateboarder. Yeah, and right now she's just simply too quick off the trigger for Trevino. Simply just can't get off. And she, she, her hands aren't just fast; they're crisp and they're accurate. And I love the way she works in the the defense with her offense. Trevino's got to get something going here. And that's the end of the second, and it was another good one for Lulu Houghton taking on Elvia Trevino. Doug, a lot of boxing going on this week. Which fight are you looking forward to, Crawford Horn or the rematch between Santa Cruz and Marez? You know, I think the rematch is going to be the more quality fight, the more competitive uh, championship bout, but I'm looking forward to Horn Crawford because I want to see what Bud Crawford looks like in his welterweight debut. He is a he's an elite fighter. He's an elite boxer, arguably pound for pound. Um, he's not number one in, in Ring Magazine, but he's in that top three across the board, um, and he's he's a real pleasure to watch. So that's the fight that I have more anticipation for. And having said all that about how excellent Terrence Crawford is, I do expect uh, Horn to be tough. I do. I, in fact, I think it might go the distance. Mm. All right. Looks like Cynthia Conte has lined up another hard-hitting guest. Cynthia, back to you.
All right, and we are back to the action. Hot and some really good body shots. Certainly hey. expecting Trevino here after in the, the uh, after number this. three as she continues to assert her dominance. And, Doug, speaking of pound for pound, I'm not big on those ratings, but I will say this. I think the winner of the Cruiserweight Tournament has to be given consideration oh, yeah. of being really in that elite class. Yeah, you got to at least crack the top ten, arguably top five. There's no doubt about that. And it's an exciting time, whether you pay attention to mythical rankings or not. There are a lot of elite boxers out there from the monster, Naoya Inui to Golovkin, to Lomachenko, to Mikey Garcia, who fights in a month or two. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of excellent fighters out there. Reportedly, in late July, I believe, at the Staples Center, he will be engaging in a unification bout against IBF belt holder Robert Easter. And Doug, to go back to our conversation we were having before, uh, I'll admit I was surprised on Twitter on Sunday before I wrote my most recent column for UCN. Uh, it is interesting to me, Santa Cruz Mares looks to be the more competitive two-way action. Horn Crawford, I, I don't know of a lot of people actually picking Horn, but it does say something about the fact that Morris Santa Cruz was a good fight the first time around. It wasn't a great one. There wasn't a lot of clamor for it, and there's something to be said about the unknown, which is Terrence Crawford at 147. Yeah, I, I agree with that, and uh, I, I think Part of the allure of Crawford's welterweight debut is him being a factor, being a player in a very crowded and talented 147-pound division. It's like people are already thinking, okay, they, they hope he looks great against Horn because they, they, they want to play matchmaker and put him in the ring with uh, Errol Spence Jr. Now, or, the, Doug, or the winner of the Danny Garcia, Sean Porter now, fight. Doug, unlike this fine stream tonight, it's not free. <laughs> the question I have, do you have ESPN Plus? I do. Okay. I do. I, I, matter of fact, I got it for the German and Cajas fight against, uh, who's the guy? Jonas Sol yeah. Sultan. So um, I'm, I'm expecting uh, more action on, on Saturday than, than from that card. All right. Let's see if Houghton can score a stoppage here. She has about 75 seconds to go here in round number four. She is starting to really step on the gas pedal, opening things up with the body shot. She is really impressive. Yeah. I mean, I like her combinations. I mean, working that, that hook to the hips and w turning it into an uppercut, turning it into a hook. Look at that. That was a double left uppercut. She puts her punches together. And we should note she was a, a world title holder. Despite the fact that she only has eight bouts. Another good right hand to the body. She works everything off that jab. And an uppercut on the inside. And she's got that punch, and she's good with that uppercut from either hand, left or right. You know, Steve, Marlon Esparza, the Olympic bronze medalist who's promoted by Golden Boy Promotions, campaigns in the flyweight yeah. division. as does another young lady we've seen under the Golden Boy banner, Sinesia Estrada. Super bad, yeah. And those would be interesting matchups uh, against Lulu Houghton. Doug, one of the reasons why I'll be at the Staples Center on Saturday, it's a 10 minute drive. Also, Jermel Charlo. Now, how much of a shot does Trout have? Is, is this shooting fish in a barrel in 2018? I don't know, I think, you know, Trout is on the downside of his career. He was uh, an, an excellent, in fact, I consider him a perennial junior middleweight contender. I do think his, his last bout, which was a, a late stoppage to uh, your guy, Hurd, the thundering yeah. Hurd. Uh, the thundering yes, Hurd. Jared Hurd. And hold on. I think I took something out of him. Doug, after some deliberation, I think some prodding from referee Jack Reese, this bout has been waved off. Look at that energy she's got. Yeah. Is that a trip walk? Anyway. I want to I want to toss her a skateboard yeah. or something. Look, she's boxing the commissioner. So there you have it. This will go down officially, I believe, as a TKO in four for Lulu Houghton. A very impressive, complete performance in breaking down Elvia Trevino. I, re I really enjoy watching her fight.
And she's coming around at the right time for female boxing. It's on it's on streams like this more often. It's on network television more often. Well, in a couple of weeks on Showbox, Clarissa Shields and Kristen Hammer right, will the, be... They uh, share a card in yeah. Detroit, correct? Yes. And that'll be on Showtime. Yeah, so we have Shields, we've got Asparza, we got Superbad, we got Katie Taylor. All right, well, Mike Hart is lined up and ready to go. He'll give you the official announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm on the advice of the ringside position. Your referee, Jack Reese, calls the stop to the fight. After four complete rounds, your winner by knockout. Bang, bang, Lulu Hortown! One more time for Elvia Trevino. All right, so that young lady right there runs her record to eight and one, scoring her fourth stoppage. And in a few moments, she'll be talking to Cynthia Conte. She gets back on the winning track, bouncing back from her February 24th lost we are halfway through the card still plenty more boxing to come but i think she's ready to go she's getting uh wiped down there from elvis grant elvis phillips and they'll take care of a little business inside the ring and soon enough we'll be hearing what the victorious louisa houghton has to say hey tonight was just a party for her <laughs> yeah it really <laughs> I mean, was. look at that energy and enthusiasm I love it. Bang Bang Lulu, congratulations! You, I didn't even want to. I didn't want to interrupt your dance. Such a happy dance. Total dominance. Total dominance. This fight, you were smiling throughout the fight. I mean, talk about how did how did your opponent fare? Uh, you know, she got forward and she was left with the flight, so I thank her and her corner for coming out to put on the match. Um, it was fun. I was having fun. Bang Bang Lulu's back in the house. You are. You are. How excited are you to be in front of you are the second female bout for Hollywood Fight Nights, and you're also, I have to state, the first and only female on Superfly Card for Tom Loeffler. You're here. You're in front of all your fans in the Philippines and in Australia and now in Hollywood. How does that feel? Uh, you know, it feels awesome to be getting more active and being back in the ring. I've truly, truly missed it. Um, it broke my heart and now I'm back, so here we go. My fans here, thank you guys for coming out and supporting me. And thanks to all my fans around the world, in Australia, my family at home, everybody that loves me, and hi to Eli and Estelle. I love you guys and I'll be home soon. Um, everyone, we're live in Hollywood on fire tonight. And what's next for you? What's next for you? What do you want? Or you want? Who do you want next? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm just working and looking to get really active, and I want to take that WBC World Title. So that's the one we're chasing. So uh, we're gonna get that. We're gonna get that. Um, I just want to thank you know uh, all the crew from the gym that came out, Jerry Ortiz's gym, and gave me the work. Guys, I love you guys. Thank you for giving me a home out here in LA. It's uh, touched my heart, and I want to thank Elvis for. You know, he's put in the work, he's been through the ups and downs with me, and um, now we're here and we're smiling and having fun together. Jimmy Montoya. Yeah, Chris Dorado coming all the way out from New York City, baby. And Elliot, always running around doing all the background stuff. Mara, who's been my main sparring partner, she's gonna be Chen. You better look out, world, she's coming. <laughs> bang Bang is back. Yeah, I also wanna thank our 360 crew 